Morrison. There, is it pulled up? I think it looks very good. Very dexterously indeed. This is a machine that is well known for generating some interesting atmospheric effects. This is neither a fixed wing aircraft nor a helicopter. It is a tilt rotor, and that will be demonstrated over the course of a spirited roll demonstration by this airplane, which comes to us from the 7th Special Operations Squadron of the US Air Force. Part of the 3rd Special Operations Wing, based at RAF Milton Hall in Suffolk. That's where it's exploded from today. And that's where it's the idea is to combine something of the flexibility of the helicopter, particularly in terms of operating. You'll see this in a lot of helicopters. You know, I mean, this is a total but when we are in the helicopter, we want this to be as light as possible. So we always have, we, we didn't bring it here because we got security, but there's usually a 50 cal, a gas in the back. We have two pilots, two flight engineers. The operating program, as I said, is joint venture between Bell and Banning, both build fuselage and all the subsystems, digital avionics and the fly by wire control system. Bell provides the wing, transmission, the empennage, the motor system, and the engine installation. In US Air Force service, the CD 22B that we see here performs long range missions in support of US Special Operations Command forces. It infiltrates those forces into combat zones. It resupplies them while they're on the ground, and it exfiltrates them at the end of the operation. The aircraft has a normal combat radius of about 500 nautical miles, with a single internal auxiliary fuel tank fitted up. But they're also able to air-to-air -air refuel from MC-130 Hercules tankers, which get a range of more than 2,000 nautical miles, and up to five hours of endurance, we can see the new MC-130 as well. In now, another fast pass. The major differences between this and the SB-22B operated by the US Marine Corps, oh, it has more fuel capacity, it has four crew instead of three on board one of the Air Force examples for typical mission. We see pilots and two flight engineers, and it's also got a terrain following radar to assist in operations of the low-level environment that can be selected by the And then, by contrast, the Army Air Corps, which is both the Marine Corps and U.S. Air Force, the first combat deployment was actually for Iraq in Afghanistan in 2004, and then the Gulf of and face down in Kabul. And we used to do a regular run for one of the four. Then you will be seeing some quality formation there back from the Civil War. Strike Master and single BAC Jet Provost. They made their inaugural combat mission when Marines and troops were inserted into a hostile zone in Kelvin Province. The next assignment is very versatile indeed. The US Marine Corps Presidential Transport Squadron uses operating carrying support personnel as well as the Pest Corps and the US Navy is flying for the four upgrades.
surprisingly for such an adaptable machine. Plenty of further roles are in prospect for the Osprey, the US Marine Corps Presidential Transport Squadron, HMX-1. Uses a fleet of B-22s to carry support personnel and members of the White House Press Corps. It's also going to come into US Navy service as their new COD, or carrier on board delivery platform, replacing the Grumman C-2 Greyhound to resupply the US Navy's aircraft carriers. Taking into account the current vogue for multi-role or swing-roll aircraft. Bell Boeing are looking at a gunship version of the Osprey. They've tested rockets and missile armament. Yes. 
first flew in 1935. Operations Squadron. 